like to welcome everybody. We're going to get started right away with news you can use. Um, today's article that we're going to discuss comes from Fortune Magazine uh, late last week. And they announced, uh, actually, this the byline was yesterday, Monday. Uh, they said that for the first time since early 2019, the month of May set a new record. Anybody know what that record is? Actually, you want to guess? <laughs> or anybody? Basically, what they said is there were more houses for sale on the last day of May than there were on the first day of May. So it's the first time inventory has actually increased during the month for about three, almost three and a half years. Also, the mortgage rate spiked to a new high, not heretofore seen since 2009. So these two things are having a major effect, of course, on the housing market. We've talked about this ad nauseum, but just as a refresher for folks new to our program, when interest rates go up, demand goes down. When demand goes down, there are more buyers sitting on the sidelines and more sellers um, hanging there with their houses in the wind that they can't sell. When you have more sellers trying to sell and fewer buyers trying to buy, uh, the natural course of action is prices will drop. And we're starting to see that uh, in a lot of areas, not 100% across the country. There are still some hot areas uh, where this has not taken effect yet. And the main reason is because there are uh, lots of still cash buyers. Um, and think of some areas, a few areas here in California, but not a lot. And some of the uh, nicer Midwestern, smaller suburban areas where people all want to move, for example, Nashville, Knoxville, um, places like that, Kansas City, where the, the market has not turned yet. However, we're on the verge of it happening. Uh, you can't pay 50% more today for a house payment than you did uh, 14 months ago uh, and find a lot of buyers who are willing to do that. It's just not as possible. Um, I saw something happen that was very interesting uh, for the first time over the weekend. Uh, out here in California, we've got a lot of wholesalers and I get a lot of um, properties that come in from these wholesalers. I look at some of them, some will end up buying at some point if they make sense. But these guys typically would put a, a price and then they would have a date uh, that they would close everything by. And what they'll do is a few hours before uh, the final, uh, they will ask for everybody's best and highest offer. Uh, in one particular case, my wholesaler buddy told me that the three people who'd bid on the house, when it came to best and final, all dropped their prices down. He said it's the first time he's ever seen that happen. He's been in the business about 10 years. He's never seen a best and final result in a lower price. But they ended up taking a, a much lower price. And it was like 25000 below the lowest high price so they'd have been better off taking that but um, that is how quick things are moving within the scope of about a week with that property maybe five days that property is on the market uh, that market went south enough that the three rehabbers who were gonna who had put offers in to buy that house all revised their offers downward and you're going to see that happen in in houses now where some of the things that i've noticed across the country uh, we're not seeing multiple offers on houses. We're not seeing multiple offers above asking price on houses. And something like, depending on whose numbers you believe, someplace between 20 and 80% of the prices that are listed for properties, those properties that have been listed in the last 30 days, those properties are getting offers below that asking price, not at or above. So those days are numbered as well. That creates golden opportunity for you in the real estate investment community out there. You guys are going to have a lot of opportunities. And I would definitely, as we would say in the business, sharpen my pencil before putting together an offer, especially a cash offer. Uh, you can get things dirt cheap out there right now because there are more and more motivated sellers as time goes on. And we're not, we're not just talking people who were in the forbearance program or people who had tenants that didn't pay. We're talking the normal things that cause a motivated seller to be created. Things like death, divorce, taxes, bankruptcy, job loss, 
medical issues, having to move family issues, those kinds of things. Any Anytime you see these things happen, uh, you're going to get more and more motivated sellers. And just for example, death. Uh, death happens to all of us. It's in 100% certainty. Uh, dead people don't need houses. And so when people die, those houses go on the market. Typically, they're left to an heir, uh, and the heir just wants their money, and they want to move on. And so those create opportunities. Those create motivated sellers. A lot of times, those motivated sellers are either kids or grandkids, and you know, grandma's house uh, became theirs. Uh, after their death, after grandma's death, and they just want to throw that thing out there and just get a few dollars and move on. So there's lots of factors that created more and more motivated sellers. While at the same time, the economy and specifically the interest rate increases are creating less and less buyers, at least less and less qualified buyers. Now we're getting more buyers going into the government programs, which will take a smaller down payment and that type of thing. But you still have that issue of a payment being fifty percent more than it was. A year ago. So a year ago, a two thousand dollar payment today would be three thousand dollars. Not a lot of people can absorb that extra thousand dollars a month red ink or or want to. So what can they do? Well, they can go out and find a much cheaper house, uh, something that today will still cost them two thousand or twenty two hundred dollars. Um, and so they can't buy a six hundred thousand dollar house, they have to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house. Well, there isn't as many four hundred thousand dollar houses. Um, as there were 600,000, but there's becoming more and more. So there is some level of activity on those cheaper priced good houses. Uh, my suggestion, if you're in the rehab business or even the, the wholesale or prehab business, would do, be to do a minor amount of fixing on a house, put it back on the market below anybody else, and you should get an offer pretty quickly at, maybe not above, uh, but pretty close to at your ask. Uh, and that is the, that's the way to position yourself in this market, be slightly below. Now, if you offer financing, if you're selling a house vis-a-vis -vis subject to or lease option or all-inclusive trustee wrapped financing, those types of things, um, the price of the house that you sell to that buyer is almost irrelevant. They're looking for what's the payment amount that I got to make and how much do I have to pay you today to be able to occupy that house? So you've got a lot more flexibility when you have a lease option product or a seller finance product where you be the seller. And so you don't have to worry about being competitive on price. Price is irrelevant uh, to a certain degree at, at that point, uh, at least to get that thing sold and off your plate. So you're in a much better position and you've got a much higher in-demand product if you can create some type of seller financing, lease option, um, seller carry back, that kind of thing where you, you're the seller. If you can create that kind of stuff, you're going to have a much easier time selling your property at or above your ask price. All right.